Hello and welcome to the Ferg Neil Show podcast. We are experiencing massive growth at the podcast, so I have started a Patreon. We already have five Patreon members, but if you join, then when I'm in America in two months, we can all survive out there together. While Trump v. Biden is occurring, you can have the sanctity of mind and think to yourself, well, at least I'm giving $5 a month to Fergus Neal to live out there on the horizon and essentially live a Hunter S. Thompson life. Guys, last week we had Andrew Bogut on the podcast. Now, people get annoyed at me when I have the Bob Catters, the Andrew Bogarts. People get annoyed. They do. They get annoyed if you have someone on the podcast who wants to speak about chemtrails. And I get that. You know, sometimes chemtrails aren't on the frontal cortex. Unless you're listening to Lana Del Rey, chemtrails over the country club, which is an absolute banger. But you have to understand my level of, of caring. Like I did an episode, I did a podcast episode with the leader of the Hong Kong protest movement, Joshua Wong, before he went to jail. If you're listening, I'm using inverted commas. Before he went to jail and now I can't enter into China. Like you got to understand my level of caring about people being concerned if a former NBA player is on the podcast or not. Like, I'm banned from entering China. Like, I don't care about Celeste from Brunswick. I care about China. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like cancel culture to me is I don't care if someone from Brunswick messages me. I care if on the way to Edinburgh, my flight has an emergency landing in Beijing and then I go missing and then in five years' time at the Olympic opening ceremony, I'm in one of those boxes from the 2008 ceremony. I'm just like dancing around. Like that's my concern. You know what I mean? That's my major concern. And that's okay. It's good to be concerned about things in life. It shows you care. It shows you want things to be better. I don't know why when people are caring though, their voices are always like, we need to do better. And we do. We do. Right now, I think the central evil in Australia, the central cardinal sin is housing. Whether you like it or not, it all comes down to housing. Can you buy a house? No. Can you rent a house? You used to be able to, and now it's getting even tighter. Every week, the vacancy rate shrinks and shrinks. And I've got friends who, like, when they have a rental inspection, they just cancel the weekend and they just clean their house. Because when a real estate agent walks through those doors, licks their fingers, and starts patting the wall for dust, you better hope there's not a follicle under that nail. Or else, bye-bye, baby. Bye-bye, baby. People are squatting now. That's how bad the rental crisis has got. Is that friend of the show, he came to my comedy festival show, I think the last two years he's been at my show. So friend of the show, Purple Pingers, who is becoming quite prolific in that he is telling people to squat in homes. Now, when squatting becomes a viable political option, like when you say, hey guys, you should squat, and the guys are like, yeah, we will squat. Something in the housing system has fundamentally broken, and I think it's time to blame property developers. I think real estate agents are old news. I think it's time to blame property developers. Listen to this. In Melbourne right now, there are 104,000 vacant homes. They're just homes that are sitting and doing nothing. Right now, 104,000 vacant homes. Now, just say those homes have one or two bedrooms. Maybe there'd be three or four bedrooms. That's probably like 200,000 people who can't find a house right now, who could have a house right now. 104,000 vacant homes. And anybody who walks past an apartment building at night knows this. You look up and it'll be like six, seven o'clock and there'll be like three lights on. You're like, what's going on? What's going on out there in the community? What's happening out there in the community? I love saying the word community because people are like, what community is he talking about? But if you just say the word community, people go, ah, the community, of course. This is an article. It's called End Vacancy. It is by Prosper Australia. 
It says, many property investors focus on capital gains, face no strong incentives to develop their vacant land or supply vacant housing to the rental market. And it's interesting, these property developers will essentially develop property, but then they have no incentive to fill that property. They can just let it sit there. And because of how crazy the housing market is, each year they just make thousands of dollars on that property just sitting there. You need to tax the f- out of these property developers. Like you need to make it like, you need to make it squeeze. You need it to be better to have tenants in there than to it than for it just to be empty. That's essentially the goal. You don't want these empty ghost homes. Even like the apartment building where I am right now, where I'm recording this podcast, there's so many empty apartments. You're like, but this is just sitting there? And then every now and then someone will come by and clean it. You're like, who's living here? They're like, I don't know. I don't know. I just get told to clean it. You're like, what's going on out there in the community? Prosper Australia shone a light on vacancy and brought public attention to the extent of this issue. We've long been concerned that misleading vacancy statistics are leading us to misdiagnose a key cause of homelessness and rising rental prices. With so much media coverage of advertised rental vacancies failing to include land, housing and apartments left undeveloped or empty, we began measuring a true vacancy rate for built property in 2007 using a world-leading methodology now in use across multiple countries. So they have speculative vacancies reports. And they identified 4.1% of all properties uh, in metropolitan Melbourne are empty. Um, This figure ballooned to 104,000 or 5.7% of the dwelling stock by 2022. Damn, so right now 5.7% of all dwelling stock is vacant which is crazy. You think like in a rental crisis, they'd be like, all right, we need to get some people into these homes. But if you're a property developer, why would you put tenants in there when there is no incentive to put tenants in there? There's a bigger incentive to just leave it. Sweet. I'll just leave that empty. And that'll just become more and more bountiful. (laughs) Why am I speaking like a a pirate? More and more bountiful as time goes by. And in response to this, Purple Pingers has come out and has said, guys, just squat, all right? Just go and have a squat, all right? Because Australia has wild squatting laws where I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure if, if, if you stay in a house for seven years, it's yours. That's some wild convict level convict era laws where if you just happen to sit in a property for seven years it's yours baby it's yours stay in a property for seven years and you own the property can you imagine getting to year like six and a half you're in like a three million dollar property like guys we've done the work we've put in the time you hear the door kind of nestle i think you'd almost just kidnap that landlord like it's Ratatouille, when all the rats take away the critic, you know, or the the food checker, whoever that main character was. I think that would be the move. That would be the move. Let's look that up. How many squatting laws in Australia? I think we have like the wildest squatting laws in the world where squatting laws, Australia, I'm, pr- I'm going to lock in seven. I'm going to lock in seven. In Australia, it may not be illegal for a squatter to enter a property if it looks abandoned and the doors are unlocked. If the door isn't unlocked, the squatter could be criminally charged for breaking and entering. If a property owner asks a squatter to leave and they stay, they're trespassing. Okay, that is so wild. So if the door is open, you can enter. Kind of scary, though, to think about right now at the front of my place. Like someone's just like, oh, the door's open? Sweet. Okay, a person who squats in an abandoned property for an uninterrupted period of 12 years exclusively may actually launch a claim to the title of that property. That is why, that's from Sydney Criminal Lawyers. So 12 years, 12 years a slave. If you can slave away in that property for 12 years without anybody noticing, okay, it's seeming hard. Why would they even make this a law? Don't you reckon? Like, isn't that crazy? Like, it's almost like a Hunger Games type test where they're like, guys, if you can make it to 12 years, (laughs) the house is yours. It sounds like some kind of sick reality TV show. That could be the next reality television show in Australia where they're like, guys, find a house. And if you last 12 years, you get the house. We will film the entire journey. We will film 
the entire journey. I wonder if it's different state to state. Okay, Queensland, it's 12 consecutive years. What about Victoria? Victoria, okay. It is not a criminal offence to occupy a house without the owner's consent. How? That's... How is it? That's wild. That we can all agree that's wild. Legal squatting should be a civil dispute between you and the owner. The owner can take civil action against you for eviction and compensation. The police should not be involved unless there's a threat of violence. That is so wild. Okay. This is about a guy who squatted. Surely not. Did he make it? Did he make it? When Percy saw a suburban house sitting empty, he moved himself in. Okay, they're hiding in plain sight in some of Australia's most expensive suburbs. Wait, so I could just walk out there, find a house, and I'm in. In a four-bedroom house in one of Brisbane's wealthiest areas, I shed my shoes at the door of Percy's place. He welcomes me in and shows me around. This is the bedroom, the walk-in wardrobe, the guest house. He rattles off. I had someone staying here the last couple of weeks. On the same street, a $1.75 million house... Sold around the corner. Percy pays nothing. He doesn't own the place. He's not renting a house any either. He's been squatting in someone else's house for seven months. That is crazy. I'm sort of a bit out of a place and I like walking around in disguise, the 34-year-old says. The first few nights he slept here, I would just wake up and laugh. Damn, the house looks good. Like he's got a full setup. Like he's got a, like it's, it's an amazing bedroom and... I don't know why he's putting this out there. Because if I was a property owner, I was looking through this, I'd be like, why does my house look like an Airbnb? I wanted it to just sit there and <laughs> and compound. But now all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I'm being extorted. All right? I'm being extorted. That'd be the scariest thing ever. You're a landlord, you come back and you're like, oh my God, someone is living in the residence. Someone has made it in. The furnished house is almost passable as normal until you clock the bottles and barrels of water scattered through the rooms. While there's electricity, he doesn't have running water and showers using a pot of water instead. This is crazy. Why do these laws even exist? A principal lawyer at JB Solicitors in Sydney said Australia's squatting laws exist to encourage mindful and efficient use of land. Ah. With owners having obligations of their own to maintain a property. That is so wild. So they have squatting laws because it's like, yeah, if you're not watching a property, we want that property to be used. Maybe the government isn't all that bad. Maybe at the conclusion of this podcast, we can be like, guys, we did it. We did it. All right. The government did it. And in 1998, Sydney property developer, Bill Gertos walked into a three bedroom house, taking it as his own after learning the elderly owner had died. Okay. This is, (laughs) he re okay. So he renovated changer locks and put renters in place for 20 years. So essentially had them squatting for him. Wow. In 2018, he won the title to the house and he sold it in 2020, making 1.4 million. This is where this is squatting law. This is squatting law. Okay. This is. I hope you guys are getting ideas from this. All right. I hope when you think about joining the Patreon, before that, you think about how you're going to fund the Patreon and you think, maybe I'll find an abandoned house and I will live in there for, for 12 years. I will sell the house and donate that $1.5 million to Fergus Neal's Patreon. That could be the move. That could be the move. It's no question that housing in Australia is in crisis. Experts say almost everything has gone wrong. Buying a home is astronomically expensive, overwhelming, a rental market already in shortage, and there is nowhere near enough public housing to fill the gaps. Well, now that we know there's 100,000 empty homes in Melbourne and Purple Ping is, is just telling people where those homes are, maybe we have inadvertently solved the rental crisis. Have we inadvertently solved the rental crisis? 
Because this is what it's about. It's about conniving, isn't it? It's about conniving. Last night I was doing a comedy gig and I was doing this bit about how at my school, every public school has one alum, don't they? They have one, one alum and they're praised. Every school has one alum. It could be an AFR footy player, could be a netball player, but the school is like, this is our person. My school, we thought we had Portia de Rossi, who was Alan DeGeneres' wife. But when Portia was at my school in Geelong, her name was Amanda Rogers. That's a pivot. That's one of the great pivots that only a public school education can teach you, that you need to gaslight your way into Hollywood. Because Alan's not going down on someone called Amanda from Geelong. You know, she's going down on a Porsche. You know, she's not... Amanda Rogers moving from Geelong and marrying the world's most famous lesbian might be the move. I think that might be one of the greatest moves ever in the history of the public education system. That's how you gaslight your way into it. And we're like, okay, Porsche went to our school, sweet. So we did like a viral Harlem shake. Our principal was on sunrise. And then Portia was like, yeah, I'm not coming back. <laughs> Portia's like, sorry, not coming back, babes. Bye. And I get it. Because if you move on from the trenches, you don't want to go back to the trenches. If you're in World War I and you get medical leave, you're like, look, I might have medical leave forever. I might have long Spanish flu. That's what I'm talking about. I might have long Spanish flu, so I'm not returning to the trenches. I'm getting out of here, okay? And I'm not coming back. And I respect Portia. She's like, look, that was my Amanda days. Now I'm in the golden era of Hollywood. And, you know, you probably don't want to remember that former life. Do you? Do you want to remember? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that if we end vacancy in Australia, you fix the housing crisis. Then in a weird way, if you think about it, if you're squatting and you don't have water, you have to buy your own water. And right now, all this stuff's coming out about, I thought it was a conspiracy, all the tap water. And then there's an article in the front of the age that says there's no safe level. Carcinogens found in tap water across Australia. And you go... It's annoying when the conspiracy theorists are right. You know what I mean? That's why I was listening to Andrew Bogart so closely because I'm like, it's like 50% of the time they're right. <laughs> and it's annoying, you know, like 12 years ago, they're like, don't drink tap water. You're like, really? And then you drink tap water for 12 years and you're like, oh, there's carcinogens in there. What? This is an article that came out today. It says, tap water across parts of Sydney, Newcastle, Canberra, Victoria, Queensland, and the tourist havens of Rottnest and Norfolk Islands have been found to contain contaminants that U.S. authorities now warn are likely to be carcinogenic with no safe level of exposure. Experts say widespread testing of Australia's drinking water must be an urgent priority. After the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's dramatic policy shift in April found there was no safe level of perfluoroctane, sulfonate, and perfluoronanic acid. Yeah, we probably don't want those long words in water. You know when you look at the back of a drink? Like you look at the back of a big M and you're like, what? Purple and ironic, acidy colors, one, two, three. You're like, just give me some milk from the teat. Is that is that all a man can ask for? Just give me some milk from the teat. The World Health Organization's cancer agency has gone a step further, concluding in December that PFOA is a carcinogenic to humans. Okay, so now what? Now I've just got to buy... Pellegrino? I've got to buy two bottles of Pellegrino a day, eight bucks a day over a year. How much? Is that a tax write-off? Can I be like, like guys, I'm writing this off because I don't want to catch cancer from you. Like, is that possible to go to the ATO and be like, look, there was a lot of money spent on Pellegrino. Okay. I'll be the first to say it. I've been spending a lot of money on Pellegrino. Okay. But it was either be dangerously dehydrated and live off fruit water or and by fruit water, I mean just like the water you get from biting into an apple. Or catch cancer. So it's up to you, really. It's on you. What do you want me to do? Okay, because those are the two options. And then the tax office goes, look, you are going to jail. And you're like, is there Pellegrino in the jail? And they're like, no, it's even worse. <laughs> it's even worse. We, don't even, we haven't changed the pipes for 100 years. This masthead has analysed publicly available data which indicates the chemicals have been found in the drinking water of up to 1.8 million Australians since 2010, Grr! including the Sydney suburbs of North Richmond, Quakers Hill, Liverpool, Black Perm, Blacktown, Emu Plains and Campbelltown. Okay, for some reason it's all the poorer suburbs. Anyone seeing something here? Along with the New South Wales regional centres of Newcastle, Bathurst, Wagga Wagga, Lifko, Gundagai and Yass. I mean... 
those places, the people, there's always something a little off. I'm sorry to the listeners from those areas, but there's is there some a little bit off? In the heads, just listen to these places that I'm reading out. Contaminated water in Blacktown, Emu Plains, Campbelltown, Newcastle, Bathurst. I don't think you come up with a Bathurst 1000 without having a few carcinogens in your head. Would you agree? You don't come up with a Bathurst 1000 without a few little, you know, a few little carcinogens in the noggin. Bathurst, Wagga Wagga, Lithgow, Gundagai. Have you been to Gundagai? They've got the Gundagai Tucker Box. Okay. Maybe this water is just tapping out pe- people's IQ and it's like dropping everyone's IQ by like 10 points. And they're like, what if we put a, what if we put a dog on a Tucker Box? And now Gundagai has a, a dog on a Tucker Box. And then a place called Yas. Yas, Queen. Like, you know what I mean? I think the water may be affecting the noggins of the people who are drinking that water. Oh no, there's going to say my suburb now. <laughs> the pollutants have also been detected in tap water in Canberra, the inner Melbourne suburb of Footscray. We've got a little good friends from there. Rip, rest in peace. Inner city Adelaide and the Queens. Oh, Adelaide got a hit for sure. Yeah, the Queensland regional centres of Cairns and Glads. Okay, I'm starting to see what's going across Darwin. Yeah, it all, it's starting to match up now. So essentially, if you go to a suburb and people seem a bit off, it's the water. And I think that's the takeaway from this podcast is, look, if you're really drinking the water, keep drinking the water. But if you feel cognitively like you're functioning, don't drink the water. Pellegrino, your life up. Guys, join the Patreon. We're building. My name's Fergus Neal. We've got some awesome guests coming up for you guys. And this is the Ferg Neal Show podcast.